Hello, I'm Freeman Rabowski, president of UMBC. I think entering my 29th year, I can tell you I have never been more impressed by this university than during this period. And, and I want to welcome you to this town hall meeting of alumni and supporters and some of our students. Uh, we are very privileged to be a, we are privileged to be a community that cares about each other in so many ways. And I want to thank all of you for your support of athletics and of the university. Uh, we've got great speakers today. Uh, you'll hear from Greg Simmons and from the athletic director, uh, uh, Brian Barrio, who has done a remarkable job. He and Greg are a dynamic team. Uh, we have amazing coaches, so many, uh, who are doing a really great job. They text me, they email me all the time about their students. They are educators, they're leaders, and they are, and my students also are letting me know how people are working hard to be disciplined. The name of the game for us right now, believe me, is about health and safety first, okay? And then about education, of course, and about how well our athletes did last semester across the board and how we're making sure they do well this semester, first academically, and then also to get the support they need athletically. And you'll be hearing about what we're doing with the American East Conference to work on all the issues that we face. But this is what I want you to think about. You know this, so many of you have been an athlete or you've watched athletics and you know that when the going gets tough, you really see who's made of what. This campus is made of grit. And more than ever, we have pulled together. Our athletes are doing a great job with their coaches and with the athletic director, uh, with Brian and Greg and others, and they are working to support each other. We need your support in all possible ways. We appreciate the fact that you care about us. And just remember, even in these challenging times, we can show every day who we are. Keep hope alive. Thank you. Hi, I'm Greg Simmons, the Vice President for Institutional Advancement and a graduate of UMBC. I've been connected to this university for 28 years. Um, and I can honestly say this has been a year unlike any other. Um, these are interesting and challenging times we live in, um, but the campus is doing exceptionally well with the leadership of Dr. Rabowski and the um, extraordinary effort of the vice presidents and the deans and the faculty. We're extraordinarily proud of the fact that we've been able to keep the community um, safe by almost every measure you can use with about 15% of our classes being offered face-to-face, -face, about 35% of our residential density. The campus looks and feels very different, but quite frankly, the spirit of this place remains, and nowhere is that more evident than in UMBC Athletics. You know, I've been around this program for as long as I've been at UMBC, but it's only been the last year that I've had the opportunity to get to know the coaches and the administration of athletics, and, and quite frankly, our student athletes on a more one-to-one more, more one -one basis. And I have been so impressed and inspired by the way they tackle their academics, the way they tackle their competition, the way they tackle their preparation. You know, I think um, when we decided that we needed to close the programs in March, nothing inspired me more or surprised me more than the courage, the, the resilience, the grace of those student athletes who learned that their seasons were going to be entered were going to be ended right in the middle of the year. In some cases, programs that were having you know extraordinary success that they hadn't experienced in some time. What I can tell you, working with the coaches, is their number one priority is the health and safety of our athletes, uh, making sure that they're prepared for their classroom and the rest of their lives, but also focused on making sure that when we resume competition, our teams are as competitive as they've ever been. It's inspiring, it's energetic, um, and it's grit and greatness. It's what we've become known for. Over the course of the this this town hall, you're going to be hearing about what the coaches are doing, how the athlete how the athletes are faring. You're going to hear about improvements that we're making to a broad range of facilities on campus, investments that are quite frankly going to help elevate the whole program. And what I would say is, we need your support now more than ever. Shoot a note to your favorite coach. Make sure you have an opportunity to, to reach out to a student athlete and wish them their best. Uh, these times are challenging in terms of budget as well, as you can imagine. Your philanthropy makes a difference now more than ever. What I know is coaches, faculty, staff, 
we're focused on making sure we put our students and our student athletes in a position to be successful in whatever they do. In your support, in the way you cheer for our teams, the way you support our coaches, in the way you help us with your philanthropy when possible, even in these challenging times, they will make all the difference. Thanks so much for what you do for UMBC and for Retriever Athletics. I'm delighted to introduce the athletic director, Brian Barrio. Good evening, and thanks again for being here. I'm director of athletics, Brian Barrio. You know, I started in January, and I think it's safe to say this year hasn't gone exactly the way I thought it would. Two months from when I started, I was on the fields telling our spring athletes that their seasons weren't going to happen. It was a time that, that I'll never forget, uh, something that was unthinkable to that point. But despite the challenges and the unpredictability of this year, it's been a great year. It's been a great year for me because of the people that I'm working with and the people that I'm around here at UMBC. So I want to start by thanking three groups in particular. The first, you heard those wonderful words from President Freeman Rabowski and Vice President Greg Simmons. They've both been tremendous in supporting athletics. You can hear it in their voice, how much they value what we do here and what it means to the university. And without their support, we couldn't do what we're doing in athletics. So, so first of all, thanks to them. There's, it's a cliche, but there's way too many people for me to thank by name tonight. But there's a few others in the leadership on campus that I think I do need to thank by name. In particular, uh, VP for, for uh, Finance and Administration, Lynn Schaefer. VP for, institution, or for uh, Information Technology, Jack Seuss. And VP for Student Affairs, Nancy Young. Without them, I can't imagine us getting this off the ground, our return to athletics. So it's, it's just very important that I let you know how much they've meant to us as we've gotten going again. Uh, you know, secondly, our coaches, our staff in athletics. You know, our coaches, just as much as our student athletes, had something very important to them ripped away in the spring. There was, since then, there's been collaboration, uh, there's been innovation, there's been flexibility, and there's been compassion. You know, there's, there's been very little I, me, or mine from our coaches and from our staff. And everybody has pitched in to try and get us back on the fields and to support our student athletes. You know, there's, as student athletes have had the opportunity to opt out of continuing to play athletics during the pandemic, coaches haven't pushed back on that. They've been sympathetic. Coaches have tended to the mental health of our student athlete and the well-being of our student athletes. So, the, you know, the things that have been done in our department um, just show what a strong culture we have. And, you know, I'm a big believer that when you have a great culture, the winning comes naturally. And, you know, I, I've seen already what kind of culture we have here. So I can't wait to get back on the fields. Uh, you know, finally, I want to thank our student athletes. You know, these 19, 20, 21 year olds, when we told them in the spring that they weren't going to play so quickly showed maturity and strength in pivoting to understanding that their sacrifice was for the community. It was for the campus community, for public health, and that it was something bigger than, than sports or themselves. Uh, I, I don't know that all 19, 20 year olds feel that way or would understand that. And they did an incredible job. They've also done an incredible job quickly switching focus to getting better in a virtual environment, which is, which is something that over the summer, I would have loved for you to have seen it in person. You know, the innovative ways that our, that our students improved themselves, both in the classroom, which went remote, um, in an athletics where they were unable to practice in person. So that's been just incredible to see. Uh, you know, I'm a big admirer of the legendary basketball coach, John Wooden. And at our uh, student athlete meeting earlier this year, I shared with them this quote. John Wooden said, things turn out best for people who make the best of how things turn out. Obviously, this pandemic is beyond our control. It's something that none of us would have wished for, but it's here. The thing we can control is how we use this time. And I can assure you that our coaches and our student athletes are using this time to get better and our department's using this time to get better. As I mentioned before, our coaches have been very innovative. We've picked up on some uh, te technology practices in recruiting, in engagement with our alums and, and donors and fans, and in many other areas that will stick with us when the pandemic recedes. So we're, we know we'll be better when we get back. You know, the other, obviously our student athletes have worked so hard in the classroom and on the fields, now that they're back on the fields, um, to be stronger when we get back. And that's been our focus since day one. You know, the other thing that you need to know about that in this period of time is that the campus has been incredibly supportive. The campus is investing in some areas that are going to make us better. First, the rack. We all know, we, all of you who've spent time at UMBC have spent time in the rack. It's currently undergoing some incredible renovations that are going to make a huge difference in campus life for all students, not just athletes. Uh, you know, we're going to go from four fitness areas in that building to 10. So you can imagine what that means 
for our students and having upgraded facilities, upgraded equipment. Um, we're very excited for that, and that's all with the help of campus. You know, second, Retriever Soccer Park has a new grandstand in place. That work is done. We're, unfortunately, we, didn't, we weren't able to return to play this year. But when you come back next year, you're going to see a different atmosphere, a different venue, uh, and you're really going to enjoy it. So that's another piece. And the final piece for us right now is a multi-million dollar enhancement taking place at the Lacrosse Stadium. Uh, and that is going to impact the fan experience in a number of ways. It's going to have improved restroom access. It's going to have a, a new entryway, ticket booth, concession stand, uh, all things that are going to make the fan experience for baseball, softball, and lacrosse much better than they've been in the past. So I want you to know, although you can't be here and see us, we're growing, we're getting better, and we'll be ready when we return to competition. The last group I want to thank, of course, is you. Thank you for being here. You know, I, I understand that we can't provide the entertainment and the physical gathering space that athletics typically does. Um, and that's, a, that's, like I said, a disappointment to all of us. We're looking forward to getting back to it. But in the meantime, the fact that you're willing to attend something like this, hear what I have to say, hear what some of our student athletes and alums have to say, that means everything to us. And your support means everything to us. So thank you for sticking with us. Uh, we are, on the, on the good news front, very excited that we are on track to return to men's and women's basketball competition next month. And I would be remiss if I didn't point out right now the efforts of our head athletic trainer, Stacy Carone, and our deputy athletic director, Jess Hammond, who have become epidemiologists, testing experts, and all sorts of other things over the last few months to help us get a plan in place that lets our student athletes compete safely. We feel like we're there. We're ready to start the season next month and we hope you can be there with us in spirit when we start. Uh, we hope at some point there may be fan access. If you haven't seen it already, we've sent an email regarding season tickets. You know, we've reduced the price knowing that we, we may or may not have fans uh, during the season, but we know that we'll, have, uh, we'll be providing cardboard cutouts of everybody who purchases the reduced price season tickets this year. And I know how much it'll mean to our student athletes to see the faces they normally see in that building, even if they're in cardboard form uh, for the first few months of this season. So please, if you see that email, the best thing you can do right now to support our teams is to sign up for those season tickets, get us your picture, and get that cardboard cut out in the event center so our student athletes can see you. So again, thank you so much. Uh, you know, I've taken up enough time. I want to I wanna make sure you hear from a couple of our absolutely tremendous student athletes, as well as one of our most loyal alums. So I believe it's Madeline Songer from our women's swimming team who's going to kick it off. So I'm going to pass it to Madeline. Thank you very much. Hi, my name is Madeline Songer. I am from a small town called Hermitage, Pennsylvania, about an hour north of Pittsburgh, right on the PA Ohio State line. This year, I am a junior with UMBC Women's Swimming and Diving, and I am one of the Student Athlete Advisory Committee co-presidents. I joined SAC my freshman year as a general body member, assumed the role of secretary my sophomore year, and this year I was elected co-president with fellow student athlete from track and field, Jameer Robinson. I originally wanted to become involved with SAC because um, throughout all four years of high school, I served on student council and I was class president for three of those years. So I was hoping SAC would give me somewhat of a similar experience, but it has actually given me so, so much more. Being in SAC has given me the opportunity to work with America East initiatives, planning events for student athletes, volunteering within the community, and working directly with the athletic department administration. Most recently, I've had the opportunity to be on the fall planning committee with our administrators, coaches, and fellow student athletes. It was a great opportunity to voice the concerns of student athletes and communicate back and forth planning a fall semester in the middle of a global pandemic. Um, I honestly can't begin to explain how hard everyone in our athletic department has worked to get us back to where we are right now. I will forever be grateful for what they've done to get us back working out with our teams, especially when most student athletes cannot have that opportunity right now. While things are certainly different this semester, everything is certainly falling into place. SAC has already had two successful general body meetings and we will soon be underway with the America East Food Frenzy Initiative. This is one of my favorite events because the teams actually compete against each other to bring in different food items every week and it directly benefits Retriever Essentials right here on campus. 
So running this is actually a lot of fun. Every Friday we would come in and tally what teams have brought in, what amount of items that week. And after doing the tally, we would send an email with all the updates to all the teams. And one time a team without any food items got called out in the weekly email and next week they had over 300 items in their box. It was hilarious. Um, when it was all said and done, we counted over 3,300 items that we were able to take to Retriever Essentials by literally truckloads. We were trudging across campus with so much stuff. So it may seem like we were able to accomplish this all on our own, but we wouldn't have been able to do it without the support of our staff, athletic department, and our alumni as well. Last year, we had a home swim meet during Food Frenzy, so we put out a post asking our spectators to bring in items, and they showed up with over 150 that went towards the swim and dive count. I was in awe. It was amazing. I was so happy to be taking bags and bags of cans over to the event center from the pool. Um, to see the involvement not stopping at graduation for student athletes was really heartwarming. As I continue my education and athletic careers here over the next few years, I really look forward to still interacting with our alumni. We're so grateful for their donations, no matter how big or small, and we're even more grateful to see them coming back to watch us compete. While things seem a bit crazy right now, we look forward to your continued support, you, and really you're part of what makes our experience here so amazing, and we can't thank you enough for that. I knew that I wanted to be a part of the program Retriever Care um, because I knew that I really wanted to make a difference in our community and I wanted to be a part of change. Um, and as we all know, 2020 has been a year and we've seen a lot of things in the media, including a lot of social injustice, which I know everyone has seen the unjust killing of yet another black man, George Floyd. And after seeing that, I knew that I didn't want to be quiet anymore. And I really wanted to stand up and use my voice. Um, so actually, a few weeks after um, the killing of George Floyd, um, I saw that UMBC Athletics was listening to the concerns of UMBC athletes and um, alumni and coaches. And they were encouraging an anti-racism campaign, which I knew I wanted to be a part of. And I really loved that. And I loved how the program Retriever Care um, was listening to the concerns of the UMBC athletes, students, coaches. Um, they wanted to take action and that they wanted to make our UMBC community more inclusive. So personally, I haven't received um, any racial comments or haven't really experienced serious racism. Uh, but I know in high school, sometimes people would refer to me as an Oreo, which means I'm physically black on the outside, but I'm white on the inside. Um, which is a real issue because that's um, making black seen as uneducated and white as educated. Because I know in the media, the way that black people are received are like loud and uneducated at times. But um, just because I speak educatedly doesn't mean I'm any less black than I am. I'm really optimistic that uh, UMBC Athletics will listen to the concerns of Retriever Care, especially because how diverse our school is. Um, our school is one of the most diverse um, schools in the nation, which I think is really cool. And not only are there different people from different walks of life, there are a lot of different flags in the Commons building, and there are even a whole bunch of different languages that they offer um, here at UMBC. Um, the UMBC community really um, makes it their mission to um, make the community more inclusive, which I think is really cool. Um, and even from to the teachers, to the coaches, to the students, to the student athletes. Um, they make sure that everyone is um, included and can be themselves no matter where they're from. So what I want people to take from this video is um, not only to be more comfortable with standing against social injustice when you see it and um, stand up for the people around you, but I also want you to be completely comfortable with yourself and with who you are. Um, because everyone's unique, everyone is different, everyone's from different places, and we should embrace that um, and love yourself for who you are because your light brings light to uh, the world. Hello, Retriever Nation. I am Larry Wiggins, class of 1975, with my wife, Evangeline. Hello, Retriever Nation. As you can see, we are proud to exhibit our support of UMBC. With Evangeline's blessing and encouragement, 
We have been able to participate over the years in raising funds for academic scholarships and for the general fund. We believe that a lot of where we are in life today is due to our continual connection with UMBC. We are also proud supporters of UMBC athletics. I believe that the recognition of the university on a national level has been helped in no small part by the growth of UMBC athletics. Athletics contribute to the culture of a university. Athletics bring students and alums together. I can remember the lean years before our team became competitive. I can remember when our mascot was the Golden Retriever. When I attended UMBC, most people never heard of UMBC, and those who did thought UMBC was a community college. However, the profile of the school began to change as the teams became more competitive. I recall the sense of pride that came from the lacrosse team winning the 1980 Division II National Championship. Later in 1998, when the lacrosse team beat the then number one Maryland Terrapins, I could not stop crowing about the win to my Maryland friends. Though I am not a true soccer fan and have never attended a game at any level, I found the exploits of the 2014 soccer team truly incredible. To watch highlights of the game on ESPN, was incredible. To have a nationally prominent team in any sport raises the profile of a university. After the basketball team beat Virginia, I can't tell you how many times while on vacation in places like the Dominican Republic, Aruba, or Montreal, Evangeline and I were stopped by people who wanted to talk about UMBC, and not just about the game. Yes, we were wearing some UMBC swag. Eventually, and I love to attend UMBC events, especially the men's basketball game. I don't believe that Coach Odom is aware that Larry is on the other side of the floor trying to coach the team. Fortunately, none of the players listened to his rant. Thank goodness. I consider myself a graduate assistant, okay? Because I believe that supporting our student athletes is supporting the university, over the years I have contributed to the athletic department. Our student athletes spend a great deal of time training and practicing to represent UMBC. A vast majority of our athletes will be pursuing careers in something other than sports. Let's make their college experience as good as possible. It has been a rewarding experience for me to meet and talk with student athletes and their families, to see the promise in them. Join Evangeline and me in supporting our student athletes as they may concentrate on their academics and their sports. No amount is too small. Give what you can so they can continue to make us UMBC proud. Go Dogs! Hi, my name is Dan Akin, and I'm a senior on the men's basketball team. I'm originally from London, England. I've been a retriever since 2017, and I've experienced a lot of high I've been on the team these past years. College basketball has impacted my life in many ways. Not only has it provided me with a work ethic in basketball, but in other aspects of life as well. Playing here has shown me that the success doesn't come easy, and if you want something, you really have to work for it. We've worked really hard here since I've gone on campus, and that has made success feel so much better. I'm grateful to take these life lessons and skills and apply them into the real world. My biggest high as a retriever so far was winning the March Madness game against Virginia. But there are many memories that I'll cherish forever. As my career here is winding down, I really see how important the support from my alumni and donors are. Being able to play in a brand new arena meant more people were attending the games, which translated into a different energy and culture throughout the team due to the influx of fans and new facilities. I know the presence of the alumni and donors at the games creates an intense competition. 
myself and my teammates are so thankful for this opportunity and we hope we can show our appreciation for how hard we play. Hi, my name is Jen Gass and I'm a senior on the women's basketball team. I'm originally from Arcbutus and have grown up my whole life 10 minutes down the street from campus. Something that I always remember from childhood was coming to the basketball games, both men's and women's, when they used to be played in the rack. One thing that drew me to this school was the atmosphere that is created during each sporting event. After having spent three years here, I can speak for my teammates and myself when I say how much your support means to us. We practice every day and look forward to seeing the support at our games and the support that has been shown to us in other ways, like UMBC Giving Day. Another event that I as a player appreciate a lot is Alumni Day. Every year, it is awesome to see all the alumni, alumni come back and hear stories from their time at UMBC. The type of support and sense of community that is given off from alumni, donors, and others is what makes UMBC athletics so special. Thank you for the continued support. It really means a lot to the women's basketball team. Hello, Retriever Nation. My name is Seth Nagel, Assistant Director for Annual Giving UMBC Athletics, and I have an exciting message for our student athlete alumni. As a means of further enhanced ties, the UMBC Athletics Department is officially launching the Retriever Letter Winners Club an exclusive alumni network for former Retriever student athletes, Spirit Squad members, and student managers. The club aims to honor alumni for their exceptional collegiate careers and dedication to UMBC athletics, while also providing opportunities to engage with one another and the university. The club will feature exclusive events, access to content from current teams, coaches and staff, and much more. Nobody knows the joy, pride, and camaraderie you experience as a Retriever student athlete except your fellow Retriever Letter Winners. Through your involvement with the Retriever Letter Winners Club, you'll keep the Retriever Nation spirit alive while serving as a role model for our current student athletes. You'll receive more information regarding how to sign up for free via email after the event. And now I'll turn it over to our Director of Athletics, Brian Barrio, to share more on the Retriever Letter Winners Club. Thank you and go dogs. Thanks, Seth. And thanks, Larry and Evangeline and all of our student athletes. Uh, I hope you enjoyed hearing from them tonight. I do want to pick up on what Seth said regarding the Letter Winners Club. You know, we think this is an important piece in connecting our extended family, our alums, with our current student athletes and coaches. And it's, it's you know, to me, very important that we, that we build those connections. That's been a focus for us this year, and particularly during the pandemic, as we've had some time without competition, we really have prioritized trying to reach out and connect with our alums. So if you're a former uh, Retriever student athlete, please, you're gonna get a follow-up email with a link. Register for the Letter Winners Club. It doesn't cost you anything. It's just a way to formally connect you with us so you're, communi you're getting the communications regarding events, exclusive offers, uh, and, and everything else that comes with being part of this family. We, we want you to be able to come back anytime, be a Retriever for life, and not feel like you have to tell anybody who you are when you come back to campus. This is home. So please look out for that link. Uh, in the meantime, you know, the people have asked again and again over the last few months, how can they, how can they help? And it, this is a helping, caring community. And I can tell you right now, the way you can help us immediately is to go to the website, make a donation to the team of your choice. We have never needed it more. With all the COVID protections going on, all the increased costs of, of keeping our athletes safe, um, we would appreciate it now more than we ever have. And we need you more than ever. So please think about doing that uh, while you wait for this, uh, for this basketball season to start. We're very excited to see you all uh, and look forward to uh, getting back on the fields and competing. So good night and go dogs.